Some of the questions that we are going to answer in this video is, what is neoclassicism? Who is Jacques-Louis David? What role did his art play in the French Revolution? With our second painting, we will talk about the life's work and assassination of Jean-Paul Marat and the art that followed his death. <laughs> Today we are making a quick shift from our Rococo era of the Western canon and straight into neoclassicism. Now this title is pretty self-explanatory as far as what kind of content we are going to see, but in short, this is a resurgence of classical styles and themes largely modeling itself after Greek and Roman art and sculpture. Classic. That doesn't leave much to say on the background of this movement, so with that, let's dig in. The first thing you need to know about Jacques-Louis David is that some historians consider him to be the father of neoclassical art. The second is that he was the court painter for Napoleon Bonaparte. In fact, according to Britannica.com, much of what we know of the emperor's mythic persona and the iconography of the French Revolution comes from David. Now, this is one of his most famous paintings, Oath of the Horatii. This is one of those iconic neoclassical paintings. It is super recognizable and sort of era defining. This oil on canvas debuted at the Paris Salon in 1785, but it was completed just the previous year in 1784. If you remember, that is not very long after the meeting and its coordinating Rococo images were finished. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there will be a link in the description. Even with the style of the meeting acting as a liaison between our deep Rococo and our neoclassical styles, the difference between these two paintings is pretty stark. So I envision Oath of the Horatii was very eye-catching for the 1785 audience of the Paris Salon. So let's take a minute to talk about salons. These have been going on since the 1600s and lasted until around the mid-1900s, usually taking place once per year. They acted as a way to display the art of up-and-coming recent graduates from famous art schools in France. If your work was exhibited at the Paris Salon, it was a sign that you would become a very successful and renowned French artist. The displays in the Paris Salons were often floor-to-ceiling full of paintings, and this is a presentation style that we can see in some museums even still today. Now. Back to our painting. In 669 BCE of Roman history existed two warring cities. This painting depicts the three Horatii brothers swearing an oath to their father to fight the Curiatii brothers to the death, each set of brothers representing one of these two warring cities. Now, surely you have noticed these women on stage right of the painting. They are not upset just because of this war. They are in a lose-lose situation, as many war-torn families find themselves. See, one of these women is from the Curiatii family, but she is married to a Horatii brother. Another of these women is indeed a Horatii sister, but she is betrothed to one of the Curiatii men. So these women will either lose a brother or a husband over the course of this war. Possibly both. Now, you might be asking, why did the court painter for Napoleon Bonaparte paint this sad family tragedy? Well, if there is a third thing you need to know about Jacques-Louis David, it is that he was a prolific political propagander. He was a prolific political propaganda painter. He was an idealist during this tumultuous time in French politics, and depicting this story was his way of asking the public to set aside personal alliances, desires, and comfort in favor of strong political beliefs. After it was completed, this oil on canvas debuted in the Paris Salon, as I said, and was a huge success. I mean that literally. Here is a scale photo of the piece. Currently, this is still hanging in the Louvre in Paris, France. Now on to our second piece. This image is called The Death of Marat, and it is by the same artist, Jacques-Louis David. Jacques-Louis 
Jean-Paul Marat was a personal friend of David's who ran a newspaper for revolutionaries in France titled The Voice of the People. He used this platform to speak often and loudly against French royalty and was regarded as someone who riled the French public. David's scene here depicts the true story of Marat's assassination, which was carried out by a woman named Charlotte Corday. Corday claimed she killed Marat in order to save the lives of hundreds of thousands of French citizens by quieting the tension of revolution. Corday gained Marat's trust by posing as a revolutionary in danger and asking him for sanctuary. And although she is not pictured in this painting, we can see her referenced by the note in Marat's hand. I get the sense that this work was very personal to David. When compared to some of his other paintings, Marat is alone in this very intimate space which we hardly see represented by David in any of his other works. He tends to favor this kind of grandiose environment where the backdrop is playing a bigger role in the painting and there are often multiple characters to look at, however, here Marat is alone. He is very much the sole focus of this piece. Although religious paintings were rejected by French revolutionaries, we can see a saintly influence in the way Marat is kind of draped over this side of the bathtub. And even the stab wound seems reminiscent of the gash in Christ's ribcage. Some historians believe that this piece is representing the artist Caravaggio, who famously included regular people in his depictions of biblical subjects which suggests another play on the spirituality David is giving Marat here. If you're curious about the context of this scene, Marat had some sort of skin infection, which meant that baths were a common part of his routine. It is also presumably the reason he is wearing this headpiece. However, this element adds to Marat's kind of otherworldly quality, in my opinion. Corday successfully turned the tide of this attempted revolution for a few years, even though, and possibly because, she was executed for this crime. This 24-year-old woman came to be known as the Angel of Assassination following her death, and public opinion did seem to favor her for many years after. Nearing the end of the French Revolution, David's The Death of Marat became synonymous with violence and terror. As politics in France changed, eventually the public would come to see Marat in much the same way David depicts him here a martyr. This painting currently lives in the Musée Old Masters Museum in Brussels, Belgium, and that is all for our studies on Jacques-Louis David. What do you all think about this kind of art? Do you prefer the overarching social and political commentary, or would you rather see the more personal stories that took place behind the scenes in our big European movements? Leave me your thoughts about David and our studies in general in the comments. Next week, I will cover Jean-Auguste Dominique Inglés, also in Neoclassicism, and I will see you then.